Ready for another MPG test drive? This week's victim is a 2017 Honda Civic hatchback. This is a sport model. It's got the turbocharged engine underneath the hood, a six-speed manual transmission, and let me tell you, it is a hoot to drive. Now, the first thing we're gonna do today is highway loops. The first loop will be a 68 mile per hour cruise control loop. We'll see what we get. Last night, I did some 55 mile an hour cruising on the highway. This is gonna be interstate. Last night was not quite interstate speeds, and it scored over 40 miles per gallon. Did pretty well. So let's cover some basics before we hit the highway. The Civic LX hatch starts at 19.7 with the 1.5 liter turbo and the six speed manual. The sport model is 21.3. The extra coin buys a tad more power and a bunch of cool bits. To get a local price, you'll wanna check out the link in the top corner of this video or down in the video description. These little beasts, they just might be the biggest performance bargains of the year. The clutch and shifter are easy to live with, the turbo is wonderfully responsive, and the car handles like it should. The LX is rated at 174 horsepower and 167 pound-feet of torque. The Sport model bumps it up to 180 horsepower and 177 pound-feet by including a dual outlet center exhaust, and it also has underbody spoilers, 18-inch alloys, and fog lamps. The Sport interior differentiates itself with a leather-wrapped steering wheel and shift knob along with aluminum pedals. The head unit supports USB and Bluetooth input, but it's fairly basic. Sirius XM, Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto are not supported. You'll need to upgrade to the EXL Navi or Sport Touring model to get a leather interior, heated seats, and a better infotainment system. Now that cranks the price up to 25.3 or 28.3 respectively, but sadly, you cannot get a six-speed manual in those models. The LX and Sport manuals are both EPA rated at 30 city, 39 highway. Premium fuel is recommended for the Sport model, while regular is spec for the LX. A multi-angle rear view camera is standard, but the Sport model cannot be equipped with Honda's advanced safety technology. So if you want collision mitigation braking, road departure mitigation, Honda Lane Watch, Lane Keep Assist, Adaptive Cruise Control, and automatic high beams, you're out of luck because you can't get them in the Sport. Let's see what she does at 68. All right, pulling up to the entrance ramp, and the first thing we're gonna do is reset the trip odometer. Hit this at about 41. Feels pretty good. Bad. And we're going to roll on some throttle real easily as we go up this ramp. Right now we're at 50 miles an hour. I'm going to go nice and easy up the hill. The dashboard makes it easy for you because you've got those really cool green and white lines that show you whether you're operating efficiently or not. And we're cresting the top of the ramp. We've got no traffic. So we'll make the merge. And I'll take it up to about 60 when we get underneath this railroad bridge. continue to ease up this next hill. It's part of the secret to getting decent mileage. Don't go all in up the hills. Once we press this, right here, now I'm into sixth gear, and I'll take it up to 68. Then we'll set the cruise control. You want to try to accelerate on your way downhill when you can. Uphill. Punch in the cruise. And right now we're going to set for 64. Got some traffic coming up behind us. And again, we're going downhill a little bit. So we'll punch it up. Nice and easy. 
now we're at a 68 mile an hour crash. Granted, that is far easier than what you're gonna see on your daily commute. Right now it is 1.53 in the afternoon. It's 42 degrees. Kind of mild in the middle of January, New Jersey. We're just over five miles right now. Had a nice clean ride so far. Speedometer sitting at 68 pretty much the whole time. And let's see. Average MPG gauge says 42.8, but it's still very early in the run. And I don't put much credence on the really early numbers. You gotta roll up a bunch of miles to get anything that's gonna be anywhere near accurate. For the folks who say those things are never accurate, you know, you're right, they're always more or less accurate. Sometimes more, sometimes less. The longer you drive, the more accurate it's gonna get. Short runs get skewed. So this loop is somewhere over 40 miles, I forget what the exact number is. And we're gonna miss the afternoon commute if I do this right, the only commuting traffic. You can hear she's a bit loud over those bridges, getting some noise off the, the cows, wind noise. But pretty good. Feels nice and solid and stable at speed. We're just over 10 miles in right now, and these undulations are eating away at our MPGs a little bit. Right now we're sitting at 41.6, and at 68 miles per hour, we're turning about 2600 RPM. Now because we're in cruise control mode, can't take advantage of the hills. The hills are beating us. So we'll take this first run and cruise, then we'll come back and take a second run without cruise and see how we do. Right now I'm pretty happy with what I'm seeing. Right around 42. And uh, that's okay. It's a bit over spec. A wee bit. Now we don't know what kind of fuel is in a tank. I would hope that it's premium. With a turbocharged engine like this one that's designed to run on premium fuel, you are going to get better performance with the right fuel. So with premium in the tank, you're going to get better mileage, you're going to get more horsepower. While this engine can run on regular, you don't really want to run it unless you want to take a hit on MPGs and a hit on performance. When you buy this car, you buy this engine, because it performs well, and then to feed it cheap fuel, what's the point of that? So you want to put the right fuel in the tank, and for this vehicle, it's premium. Now it is spec for up to E15. I'd love to test this on E15, because E15 costs a little bit less than regular, and it gives you a bit more horsepower, a bit more octane, actually, than uh, does. It could be a little bit Unfortunately, it's not spec for anything higher than E15. If I had my druthers, I'd test it on E30, which is the performance tool. Lower price than regular, a lot higher octane. Along the lines of a 93 octane conventional premium. Getting over here, coming up to the uh, Corkscrew, as I call it, where we get off of 295 and get on to 195. And it's a bit scary. And here's where I use a little bit of technique. I'll take it out of cruise right here. And I'll start coasting. When you do that, the engine gets into a super efficient mode. You really don't want to carry too much speed into this because at the top of the corkscrew, you want to be at about 40 miles per hour. Right now, I'm at 50. There's a downshift of fifth. We've got a nasty merge over here. We'll let these cars go by. I'm at 45. Downshift to fourth. Foot off the throttle as much as possible. I'm 
hitting at 41. Foot super light. Feels really good through this corkscrew. Nice and solid. Along with the expansion joints, just fine. Here I am, catching up to the traffic in front of me. Downshift to third. Triple odometer says uh, 43.2 at this point. It's going to go down. Got another tricky merge here. This is 55 here. A lot of police presence usually. So through this section, I can't be a cruise control, obviously. Right here, I'm going to set it again. And I'm going to set it for 60, even though it's 55 here. You see knuckleheads maybe try and pass me on the right, like this guy. Good for him. There are always cops sitting here, and more often than not, people that do that get caught. Because it's stupid. Right lane ends up here, the merge is a little tough. Now as soon as we get back down to two lanes, it goes to 65. And I was in fifth there, so I'm going to go to sixth. And I'll reset the cruise right here. Six miles into this and showing 42.2 mpg. We're 20 miles into the loop. I'm getting over because the merge can be a little crazy over here. Average mpg meter says 42.1. So it's pretty consistent. See that big merge coming off the turnpike there, that's why you want to get over. Perhaps we doing our turnaround up here, just over that hill. And again, once I get to the top of this hill, I'm gonna use my little trick. Right here, take it out of cruise and coast. I know I'm getting off of that exit. So if you can anticipate, you're going to save fuel. Don't do this if there are people behind you, obviously. You're seeing as they're not too close, I'm just fine. Now we're into the ramp. And we saved a wee bit of fuel there. A wee bit. And this stoplight is always a wild card because if I make the green, it's always good for the MPGs in the lab. More often than not, I don't make the green. Right now we are at 21.3 miles and 43.1 miles per gallon. Bad. And we're gonna turn left here at the light and then turn right again to get back onto the highway. This is our turnaround point. So we've got the entrance ramp, we've got this exit ramp, we've got a stoplight, we've got another entrance ramp, we're back up to speed, and then there's a ramp between. Let's see how we do on the way back. It will be lower than where it is now for sure. It nearly always is.
loves these ranch. And it's really, really well. ramp coming up. I love this ramp. You can usually hit this one at uh, a pretty good clip. We are at 28.3 miles into the loop. Average is 42.4. I'm going to turn cruise off right here because I've got this truck in front of me. He's going to slow down a lot. Usually I cruise through here, and maybe on a second loop if there's nobody in front of me, I can go through at my normal rate of speed. Right now we're doing 44, which actually, you know, that's pretty fast for a straight truck. Six miles again. The average MPGs are sitting at 42.9. It's not dropping, which is kind of surprising. Usually, this run up in the river, 
eats away at that number, it's just doing just fine. Just past the 40 mile mark, and we're at 42.4. pretty well on cruise control. I'm real happy with the way that it did on the uh, way back. Let's see what we got here. Alright, underneath the bridge, 42.1 miles, 42.7 miles per gallon. Excellent. tricky is it fourth or is it sixth? We're going to set our cruise at 60 just to get up this hill. But the rest of this we're not using cruise. Okay, cruise off at this point. Going to ease on it. Trying to keep it in the green zone. So in this second run, I like to say we aim for between 60 and 68. So the overall average speed is going to be a little less than what you would do with a cruise control run. Did I say 60 to 68? 60 to 72. Because we go above. That's right, kids. On the downhill runs, pick up a little bit of extra speed. Like right now, I'm doing 73. Whoops, 74. And we let off. A little bit of that pulse and line thing going on. Get a little bit of extra speed, let it carry you through. Sometimes that can work in your favor. If you watch the way that tractor trailers drive on the highway as they're going up and down hills, the guys that are long distance drivers that are worried about which money they spend on fuel. They pick up speed going downhill and they lose it going up them for a number of reasons. One of them is efficiency. At the end of the run, it's real money. The downside to driving 
without cruise control is you can tend to go faster if you're not paying attention. So keep an eye on the speedometer, obviously. Keep an eye on that thermometer, MPG gauge. And it makes it really easy with the green and white lights, bars. Keep it in the green as much as possible to do well. Right now, we're almost four miles in, and I'm at uh, 43.8. Out. 11 miles into this second loop, going slower, not in cruise control. I settled into the right lane. Our folks are doing about 58 right now. I was doing a whole lot faster early on, but got to get off up here in a little way. So here, let's just see what we can get out of this. People are slowing down a bit much. I might have to get back over to the center lane and pass them. I'm two miles the corkscrew and the average MPG meter says 46.8 miles per gallon. When you slow it down, take your foot out of it, drive really light, your efficiency goes way, way, way up. Simply the way it is. All those folks got off. Doing about 63 now, which is okay. It's how fast people are going. I'm not holding up traffic. Driving with the flow, I just happen to be in the right lane. These numbers are excellent. Real pleased with what I'm saying. It won't be that high on the way back. I'll tell you this. When you drive without cruise control and you've got the uphill stuff to go, it's easy to just get in too far and uh, use up more gas. When the machine's driving, it takes the human out of the equation. Sometimes you can beat the machine, sometimes the machine beats you. That said, getting off right now, we're in that coast. Got a pickup truck behind us. He's gonna crawl up our bumper until we hit the loop. He's backed off a bit. Keep an eye out for this merge. Get there. Go ahead and get over. Yeah, we're gonna catch up to that stuff. That's not good. Never fun taking this in the back of a bunch of slow pokes. But right now the MPG meter says 48.3. It's pretty awesome. It'll go up a little bit higher, maybe. 48.5. Once we start climbing, though, it's going to go down. Remember when I was telling you about the heavy police presence in this area? That's it right there. I'm sitting at 47.3 right now. Not too shabby. 20 miles into this second loop. This is the loop without cruise control. 46.5 miles per gallon. That Nissan Z is in a hurry, we'll let him go by and we'll take our chances with the merge here. Turnpike bike merge is light, excellent. Now one thing I've noticed with this Civic is that it's a lot louder than the cars that I've been driven lately. I just got out of the uh, Lincoln MKC and I had a Buick LaCrosse not too long ago. These are much heavier, much more extensively insulated vehicles. So if a quiet car is your thing and you like the Civic, maybe you want to look at adding a little bit of insulation to it. 
quiet it down. I like the way the engine sounds. It's got a nice exhaust note. We're getting a lot of road noise. Now that could be because of the specific tires or could just be because there's a lot less insulation underneath the carpet and inside the wheel wells. That would be a really interesting experiment to do. You know, go to a, someone like Dynamat and say, hey, let's take this brand new car and make it quieter. How many decimals can we take out of it? There are other companies too that uh, have insulation products that you may not be as familiar with because you don't see them in retail. 3M, for example, has some really cool insulation pieces. So maybe you could fit stuff inside the wheel wells. The problem with insulation is you gain weight. You gain a lot of weight with insulation. More weight, less fuel economy, less performance. Just, you know, one of those trade-offs. Oh, right now, 46.8. Talking about fuel economy. It's excellent. Excellent. I don't know that I could shake a new car out of a manufacturer and say, hey, can we make your new car quieter? They might not take that well. But it would be an interesting experiment. lose a little bit here of course 46.1 up the hill that's six gear I wish this had a gear indicator there's stuff that you know I'd like to add that you could add with um, some digital gauges I it's a turbocharged engine it will be awesome to have a boost gauge there might be one in there someplace but I haven't found it yet A lot of traffic going on here. I gotta concentrate so I don't mess up my average. 45.9, let's see if we can hold it. Coming up to the ramp. 295, heading about 56 miles an hour. 28.6 miles into the second loop, and we're sitting at 46.6. carry a good bit of speed through here, unless there's people in front of me. Bad pothole right there. I hit that on a motorcycle. Top of the hill here at 60. Civic held true to just about every vehicle I've tested over the years, hundreds of vehicles. I lose a bit on the way up. And I usually do better without cruise control. And in this case, it's absolutely true. This loop without cruise control, 45.9 miles per gallon. Pretty darn good. 
think that's all we're doing for today. We'll do some zero to sixties later. Maybe. Good luck. Almost lost my hat there getting in. It's a bit tight. Headroom is excellent. I've got four fingers. Plenty of legroom for such a small car. The seat's back to where uncomfortable driving. No center armrest. Nothing to plug into here. No vents. No cup holders. All we've got is two bottle holders in the doors. So if you're planning to drive around a bunch of drinkers, their options will be limited. Overall though, this is very comfortable back here. Nice lean to the seats, good packaging. Overall, the Turbo Civic hatchback is an excellent value in either LX or sport trim. Opting for these models rather than for the SI or Type R allows you to spend more of your hard earned cash on customization. You can easily add goodies like seat heaters, leather upholstery, upgraded audio systems, and aftermarket wheels to make your Civic hatchback truly unique. Thanks as always for watching. We'll catch you down the road.